Integrated photonic circuits are becoming increasingly complex and demanding every year. Hybrid integration attempts to satisfy the ever more stringent requirements of optical components by combining the best materials for every component. Lithium niobate, for example, is a perfect candidate for hybrid integration, since it provides not only a high electro-optic coefficient, but also high second and third order nonlinearities with extremely low losses. Modulators are one of those com components that is still under development. And it is difficult to find broadband modulators that are fast, have a high extinction ratio and low insertion loss. Also, pure phase or amplitude modulation is hard to come by, which complicates coherent data transmission. Germanium absorption modulators, for example, are fast and have a reasonable extinction ratio, but have high insertion loss and only work at telecom wavelengths. PN junction modulators are also fast, but still suffer from high insertion loss. Modulation based on the Pockels effect, such as the one in lithium niobate, have the possibility of performing very well in all of these categories. The group of Marco Lonchar at Harvard has shown 100 GHz electro-optic modulation using monolithic thin films of lithium niobate. This is very promising, however, it is a very dedicated technology, and certainly not CMOS compatible. Hybrid integration of lithium niobate has also been done by multiple groups using wafer bonding techniques. Microtransfer printing of thin films of lithium niobate enables its properties on the silicon nitride platform through the use of hybrid waveguides, where the light is guided by the silicon nitride, while a large portion of it is situated in the thin film of lithium niobate. We, at Ghent University, have developed a transfer printing process for lithium niobate and demonstrate a proof-of-concept electro-optic modulator which performs close to the expected values from simulations. This shows that the transfer printing process does not degrade the properties of the lithium niobate thin film. Let's first discuss the transfer printing process before, go before going over the results from the proof-of-concept device. Microtransfer printing allows for the hybrid integration of micrometer-sized devices or thin films. In this technique, two wafers are fabricated separately. On the source wafer, the devices or coupons are patterned and released, while simultaneously and completely separately, the photonic integrated circuits are fabricated on the target substrate. An elastomeric stamp then transfers the coupons from the source to the target wafer. Careful control of the adhesion enables this transfer. The source wafer is prepared not only by patterning the structure you want to transfer, but also some thin tethers. These tethers are strong enough to keep everything in place, but weak enough to break easily. The coupons are then released by removing the layer underneath using wet etching. The stamp is made of an elastomer, which has a variable adhesive strength based on the speed at which it moves. The coupon can then be picked up by quickly moving the stamp, which also breaks the tethers. The coupon can then be placed down by pressing it against the target and slowly removing the elastomer. A thin layer of PCB, an adhesive polymer, helps to increase the adhesion between the coupon and the target. Since the transfer can be done in parallel and can be automated using pattern recognition, it makes microtransfer printing a high volume manufacturing technique. Contrary to wafer bonding, the coupons in transfer printing are exactly the size you need them to be. And because multiple source wafers can be brought together on one single target wafer, it allows for different materials to be densely co-integrated in the same photonic integrated circuit, all in a real backend compatible process. In this process, the source wafer is only used to fabricate the devices you want to transfer, and thus makes efficient use of the material, as you can see from the figures to the right. The method is however reliant on an alignment accuracy, which can be dependent on the equipment that is used. Using the appropriate tool is therefore important. Lastly, the use of an adhesive layer of PCB is required which can sometimes cause some issues. On the right are some examples of different devices that have been transfer printed in our group. Indium phosphide semiconductor optical amplifiers, 
gallium arsenide photodetectors, and of course the lithium niobate thin films of this presentation. For the lithium niobate coupons specifically, we use commercial 300 nanometer thin films of lithium niobate. The wafers are purchased from Nanoelan, a company in China, and are fabricated using standard photolithographic processes. The coupons, in this case, are simple rectangles of 1 mm by 60 micron, and the tethers support the coupons from the side. We pattern both the coupons and the tethers using argon milling and a chromium hard mask. They are then released by under etching the oxide using hydrofluoric acid etching and critical point drying. A silicon nitride chip is processed in parallel but completely separate using electron beam and reactive ion etching. This process, uh, this particular chip contained a variety of waveguide structures and machinery interferometer structures with grating couplers for vertical coupling. Before the transfer printing, a thin layer of BCB is then spin coated on top. The source and target samples are then brought together in the transfer printing tool, where an elastomeric stamp picks up the coupons from the source and presses them against the silicon nitride circuit, resulting in the microscope image on the right. Because the lithium niobate is transparent, we can even see the waveguide underneath the coupon. Transfer printing might seem like a bit of a rough process, but the following results demonstrate the quality of the fabricated devices. To test the passive properties, simple Machtender interferometer structures were fabricated, consisting of two multimode interference structures that act as 3dB splitters. A 1mm coupon is printed onto one of the interferometer arms. In the resulting structure, the light is confined by the silicon nitride, but a large portion of it is located within the lithium niobate layer, creating an unbalanced Machtender interferometer. Using these principles, many different thin film materials can be transfer printed, such as silicon, 3.5 materials, or even more exotic examples. It does, however, require some process development. And as you can see in the image, the process is not yet perfected, as some of the tethers failed to break in this instance. This sometimes causes the coupon to break, but was harmless in this case. These structures were then measured at wavelengths around 1550 nanometers. The silicon nitride MMIs were, however, not perfect, causing some extra losses. But after normalization, the measurements fit a simple Machtender interferometer model very well. And with the extinction ratio, the loss can be calculated. We measured extinction ratios of 12 dB, which correspond to an equivalent loss in the coupon arm of 4 dB per coupon. Since we simulated a transition loss of around 2 dB per facet, taking both facets of the coupon into account, this indicates the propagation loss remains low. We also, also measured individual waveguides with a lithium niobate coupon on top, which gave similar but slightly worse results of around 4.5 dB per coupon. To measure the active properties, one extra metallization step adds electrodes to the Machtender interferometer structures. Even though the coupon is one millimeter long, the electrodes were only 900 micron long. The electro-optic response is close to the simulated values. By varying the voltage over a large window, we can create a full pi phase shift, and fitting a sign to these results yields a half-wave voltage length product of 5.8 volt centimeters which is slightly below the simulated value of 6 volt centimeters. We attribute this to a slight misalignment of the electrodes, which may have improved the half-wave voltage length product, but also increased the insertion loss to around 7 dB. Though a large portion of this can be attributed to some imperfections in the MMI structures. At higher voltages, both positive and negative, a departure from the linear behavior can be seen. We showed a proof-of-concept demonstration of microtransfer printing thin films of lithium niobate, which opens it up for dense co-integration with other materials for electro-optic and nonlinear properties. 
We will continue to further develop the transfer printing process to create a fast modulator, while trying to increase the interaction strength by printing longer coupons. We are also looking into reducing the losses by adding taper structures to the coupons. Here you can see an image of an early printing test for coupons with tapers. Finally, I would like to encourage everyone to look at different material platforms when designing their photonic circuits, because each material has its strength, and transfer printing might be able to bring them together. Thank you.